guys hear me? So I've had some thoughts and general things I wanted to share, make a video about. It's been a couple weeks, but haven't really had much to document. It's been busy with the holidays. But today I figured, why not bring you through a typical Tuesday? People kind of wonder what it's like to work at Google from like design to meetings to like the everyday thing. So I figured I'd bring you um, day in the life. So I had a call at 8.30 this morning because I'm working with a designer in Munich on a project and so we sometimes we have early meetings to uh, hit the end of their day in Europe and then the beginning of our day here. I was on my way from school into the office and had to take a phone call while driving but uh, actually not too bad just taking a phone call. Obviously I'm doing that and vlogging but um, yeah, it's Tuesday. Okay, so Tuesdays are normally my busiest meeting days. One of the things that's been um, super useful for me at Google is to like block all my meeting days within a couple days and then like heads down design days other days. So Tuesdays and Wednesdays I have a lot of meetings back to back. Um, some early this morning like um, I just showed you uh, with people um, in Paris, in Munich, in London. And then I uh, have like team check-ins about to jump into our weekly design crit. The meeting I just got out of was uh, with, like I said, a designer in Munich, um, 2 p.m.'s a writer, um, just giving updates on, on progress throughout the project. And then I'm about to jump into our Chrome UX Weekly, which is um, kind of like an all hands where we all get together, um, give updates, and usually have some uh, person share their work or um, someone, someone else in Google share what they're working on for our visibility across product areas. As you can see, I also have my breakfast here. Don't have much time to eat today, given all these meetings early in the morning. I'm still gonna eat while uh, we have this meeting. Third meeting of the day, doing a quick scrum with the desktop team on Chrome. That's the main focus I have is working on desktop, so uh, going through projects and giving updates. So it's 11.30. <clears throat> I have a two hour block now to get some actual design work done. Um, have lots of edits and lots of uh, UI review decks. It's a summary of a project for approval um, to put together. So um, I'm in Irvine today, not LA, where I normally work. So working out of the cafe here, uh, got a lot of work to get done. Um, so going to uh, put the headphones in and uh, do the damn work. So I got quite a bit done the last two hours. I am now jumping into a quick meeting with um, one of our content writers. Uh, she's probably one of the best uh, content writers I've ever worked with. It's been super awesome working with her, uh, not only UI stuff, but like very specific privacy and like legal stuff. It's always great to work with a writer when doing UI, especially stuff that's um, global and has a lot of impact. So uh, excited to meet with her and uh, work on some UI strings.
Okay, so it's 20 minutes to three. I wanna go back and design some more given um, all the feedback that I just got from this last meeting, but I won't have time for that. I've got, just going through the rest of my day, uh, 3 to 3.30, I've got a one-on-one -on -one with my manager. Uh, 3.30 to 4, I've got a one-on-one -on -one with uh, the PM of the main project I'm working on right now. And then from 4 o'clock to 5, I've got a meeting with um, another product team that I'm working with on a collaborative project. So not a lot of time to design. Um, I'll probably have to get to these updates tomorrow, uh, but this is kind of the typical um, chaos of my meeting days. Uh, but generally, really the whole point is to get as much information, get as, as much feedback, review issues, approvals um, in the shortest amount of time so that I can actually focus and produce the design, um, get the mocks or the documents or the decks made um, to actually drive the project and uh, get shit done. Okay, so that was a typical Tuesday for me. Uh, I wanted to document that one because I need an excuse to talk about what I really want to talk about, which I'll get to at the end here. But really, you know, there's a lot of conversation uh, in design about working for yourself versus working at a startup versus working at a big company, and they all have their trade-offs. Uh, I recently just did a talk at UCI uh, about design at Google, and I think it's really important as a designer to understand what you enjoy doing best, what you're best at, and knowing um, you know, what you can bring to a company or to a client and what you get in return, whether it's impact or um, autonomy or access to career growth, whatever. Uh, and a long story short, I had a nine hour day, uh, which is usually longer than I normally work, but um, sometimes, you know, you need to put in the extra hours. I was breaking it down and really only had four and a half hours of meetings. Um, and Tuesdays is usually my biggest meeting day. So reasonably, they gave me four and a half hours to actually do design. Obviously, I have to like go to the bathroom and eat sometimes. So if I take an hour away from that, that's three and a half hours of design work amongst the four and a half hours of meetings. And for me, that's, that's pretty reasonable. As I look at my output as a designer in a five-day work week against my meeting time, um, I feel like often it's not really time that's the issue because I think there's plenty of time to get design done even when having lots of meetings. And I wanna talk about meetings a little bit. So thanks for watching that. I get that it was probably kind of a little boring given it's just little anecdotes and then time lapses of me in meetings. But I wanted to do it intentionally because I think there's this perception of design that like we should just be on our computers designing all day long and that's the most important thing and any time designers have to go to meetings, it's a drag and they're useless and it's not worth our time. Uh, but the longer that I've been at Google and spent time uh, working on projects that are, are much larger, right? Like they have a lot more constraints. They're um, big products that are already touching a lot of people. And so you can't just make um, very quick decisions without seeing large impact on a lot of people. And so, so day like today is very interesting because uh, even still, I only spent half my day in meetings and this is like my most meeting heavy day. Uh, I know if there's like a lot of design managers out there, they're in considerably more meetings, or as, as you go up in management, I assume. If you if I break down my day, I think it was at work nine hours, and four and a half of those hours, uh, I was in meetings. The other four and a half I had time. Obviously, I need to like eat and go to the bathroom, but I think it was about three and a half hours of work. So as I was looking through my schedule and this thinking about this video, I was realizing that the kind of the the part that I've been realizing as I mature as a designer is that it's not so much how much time you have, it's but how you spend that time. And so it really comes down to efficiency, um, not really the amount of time that you have to design. I found that uh, me being remote, I'm often more productive because I have less distractions given I'm not in an office with a ton of people that can tap me on the shoulder. That is for me, in my mind, one competitive advantage I have um, being on a distributed team. Uh, that comes with its drawbacks. I'm in a lot more calls as well, but I think that my time heads down is more productive. Uh, there's been two things that I've kind of identified that help me with productivity. One of the biggest things I've been seeing a difference in this last year has been 
diet, which is not something I've normally done. I've never been a very athletic or a gym guy. I've never really dieted much. But this last year I started keto, which is like a basically a no sugar, no carb diet. When I'm on my diet and my body is using uh, fat as an energy source and not sugar, I just personally have a huge, I can feel and sense a, a huge difference in my focus and my productivity. Um, how quickly I'm able to switch tasks and get back on task. Uh, when I'm not on my diet and I'm eating a lot of bread or I'm eating sugar, I generally feel more sluggish. And when I look at the end of the day, at five o'clock when I go home, I can see and I can know uh, there's a, a big delta there between the work I get done when I'm in keto and the work I get done when I'm out of keto. Um, that might not work for everyone, but for me, being in ketosis and eating um, a carb, sugar-free diet, has drastically changed uh, my efficiency, I think, as designer. The second thing, uh, and this is probably more relatable, is emotion. I think the happier I am and more optimistic I am, I feel like the more productive and inspired I am as a designer and as a creator. And that's been hard for me because this last year has been hard. Um, me and my family, my wife, have had a lot of issues with deaths and illness life change and as you're dealing with everything outside of work it becomes hard to maintain an optimistic and positive outlook on things when a lot of things are falling apart and so for me i've been having to struggle with dealing with all the shit of life and also be optimistic and productive and inspired as a designer um, and i don't really have a good like i don't have a life hack of how to get out of that mindset um, i've found myself in that mindset a lot this last year um, and it's something that I've struggled with of going in and out of an optimistic versus pessimistic uh, mindset and being able to retreat to work and just get work done versus knowing there's a ton of shit I need to deal with on a personal level. So I mentioned the notion of being in a bad mental state and frankly the whole reason I want to record this video was to talk about this thing that's been plaguing my mind the last month or two. Let me frame this with like how I approach a design problem. Often when there's like a nebulous, like larger design project, once I understand kind of the whole problem, I like to design solutions on a spectrum. So like I'll take a very conservative approach that would be easy, probably not as impactful. And then an approach that's like very impactful, probably more end work and harder to achieve. But in bookending like the, the options of the spectrum, it helps create a conversation of kind of what the right solution is on that spectrum or how you would do something more conservative from the beginning and then shoot for something more ambitious later on in the timeline. So that being said, it's kind of how I think about design and um, it'll make sense as I talk about this issue of where my mind's been at. Uh, I tend to think about things in kind of a binary way. I've always like had like, this is right, this is wrong in my mind. And the la as I've grown up as an adult and had other experiences, that's become less the case. If you watch the vlog for um, a while, you'll know that like I like to draw parallels between like design and career and being a professional to my personal life of like being a dad and a person of faith. There's this parallel that I've been wrestling with the last two months and I kind of have some clarity on it so I want to share it with you all because that's what I do here through this digital way of therapy. So in design, we like to say that we focus on the user, you put the user first, we all have user-centric design, and we do A-B testing and qualitative testing and interviews and surveys to understand the best way to bring a user through some software, um, understand their constraints and their environment. And I think we, we try to do our best at that. But when I'm using my iPhone and I wanna open a map link in Google Maps, not Apple Maps, and it won't let me, for me, that is where this all falls apart. Like I think in tech, we can be user centric, but on the spectrum of like this to that, I don't think we're entirely always user centric because I think most of us are designing for businesses that have to turn a profit and have motivations to keep people within their ecosystem or their app. But as I think about it in a very binary way, as we say like, hey, we're user centric, um, user comes first. That's always kind of like with an asterisk. It's like, yeah, the user comes first if they stay within our ecosystem but only up to a certain extent. And frankly, I work at Google because I think Google has a very good handle on this as far as what is in their value and how they monetize things and them still doing right by the user. Uh, frankly, Chrome, I think, is great at this and the fact that you can use Chrome without a Gmail address um, and we are pretty open as a software. Uh, but that's like a small like realization it has like, well, yeah, your user first up to the constraints of like cannibalizing your business. 
as I'm like playing with that like semantic like mind game of the design and tech industry, I realized the parallel to like church in this conflict that I've had personally this last year of the separation of like American nationalism and Jesus and faith. And that is that like, I think it's easy for us to say that like, and this is a sentiment that I live by and something that I value a lot is that like, we should be leading lives of generosity and give to those that don't have and be grace filled and loving. And I think all of that is great. But as I, as I take that truth on one side of the extreme and I compare it to a lot of the values that um, we have as a capitalistic country, um, as Americans, as society that cares about us and who we are, how we identify, like we make most of our decisions around, I'm not going to say us, I'm going to say I make most of my decisions about me protecting myself and my family and making sure I'm okay. And I don't think that's necessarily bad. I think it's what makes this country great and what makes innovation happen. It's what drives us as a culture. But I do think that it's in potentially direct contrast with what a lot of my faith tells me. And so I'm struggling with that like ambiguity and that juxtaposition. And I think it's similar to saying you're user-centered and all that matters is the user, but yet you still need to be profitable and make decisions that help your business. And so I draw that parallel not because I want to shit on like religion or tech or competition or nationalism. I don't want to make this a political thing. This is a personal struggle that I've had and a tension I've been sitting in and like that in the end kind of puts me in a negative mindset because I'm acknowledging that like, oh, these things to be buttoned up and very simple things for me to understand and realizing, oh, it's not that simple. Oh, like things are kind of shitty. And that puts me in a bad set of mind. And I'm still learning to like deal with that and understand how to land on something that I feel good with, but I'm in a very ambiguous state today. The net net of all of this is that I want to encourage any of you that watch this and engage with a lot of you online. And it's kind of silly that I share these like personal thoughts publicly, but I think it's useful for other people to hear. And my encouragement is that like, I have a lot of satisfaction and pride in being in this like uncertain state. And I think certainty and like buttoning things up very cleanly and thinking you know everything about them is potentially very dangerous. Three years ago, I would have given you a very direct point of view that I had on how you should design products for people and do user research and how I identified as a Christian white male. And that for me is completely different and confusing, but I feel like I know more about myself and have thought critically about these things. And so whatever the topic it is, if you're not a person of faith or whatever, it doesn't really matter. I think my takeaway is that having the freedom and the permission to question things that you thought were true is really, 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 really important. I've grown a lot from it and I'm still growing from it. I don't think I'm out the other end yet, but I'd encourage all of you to question the things that you think you're certain about and to have some perspective on those things because I think when people stop questioning and they take things wholesale and they don't really think about it is when you start to get in some real ignorant, caustic um, scenarios. I wish I had a better, like more positive thing to end with, but that's where I'm at. Uh, and there's only a couple more weeks to this year. Um, I'm hopefully gonna make at least one holiday video over the, the break, but there's a little insight to my meeting days, how I stay productive by not eating bread and uh, why I'm sometimes not making videos because I'm kind of bummed out and trying to figure out life. That's it, I'm gonna go help my son with a robot thing at his school, so pumped about that to volunteer and get some time with my boy. I'll see you guys in the next one.